Since the beginning, going back to the 1980s, streets have always been a primary focus of Fort Worth South's work. They're critically important because they really serve as that public space, that um, community room where the social activities occur, it's how we experience our city, and really they, they set the stage for great things to happen in those buildings that line the streets. When the neighborhood was first built in the early 1900s, the streets functioned in many ways. Of course, they, they carried traffic, streetcars, early cars, bicycles, and people walking. Over time, traffic engineers focused only on the movement of cars, and particularly in inner, inner areas like the near south side, the focus was only on moving cars quickly through these older areas and to the newer developing areas outside of town. We were left with narrow sidewalks, and in many cases like 8th Avenue, we um, lost all of the trees that were planted along the original street. Um, those are, that's damage that you can see. You also see damage to the businesses that are located along those streets. Our approach has been to return our streets to their original functions. We use the term complete streets. They work for all users. It's not a choice between moving people and goods or having businesses thrive. That's not an either or, or choice. We're able, with the right design, to have streets that work for everyone. There are really two categories of projects. There are the big streetscape projects or reconstruction projects that, that uh, include great examples like Magnolia Avenue, sort of the, the pioneering example for the entire city of Fort Worth, where you know, the focus was on that roadside environment, putting down the nice wide sidewalks, having some re protected recessed parking spaces for the adjacent businesses, lining the sidewalks with trees, with pedestrian lights, putting benches in the right locations along with trash receptacles. Those are all key ingredients to create this comfortable pedestrian environment. The other category of projects are just simple restriping projects. It's, it's cost effective. These aren't expensive um, projects. The purpose of those restriping projects is to create complete streets um, so that they work well for everyone. We've done restriping projects on Main Street, on Magnolia East of Hemphill, on Jennings, and on West Vickery. These complete street approaches are really being proven as successful throughout the country, and Fort Worth is a leader in that regard. The city has different development tools to address neighborhood development because having strong neighborhoods is vital to the success of the city. A lot of these neighborhoods have had disinvestment in these commercial corridors as the big box trend has started and people started building more retail and malls and things like that. So these areas were left kind of in decline. And the Urban Village Program is an idea to come back to that little commercial corridor and help revitalize it to provide a pedestrian oriented space that people can walk to. We use some development tools within the urban villages. We use our mixed use zoning. Mixed use, as the term implies, allows a mixture of uses like residential and commercial. But the other thing that it does is it forces buildings up to the street. It dictates where you put buildings on lots. It dictates the parking and everything going to the side or the rear. So you end up with something that fits within the urban fabric. There are also elements that are required along the streetscape, like street trees and lights, and that helps tie together a neighborhood and provide a cohesive look. The neighborhoods can have a lot of say, um, especially if the neighborhood associations unite into a neighborhood alliance. Um, that gets a lot of attention from all our council appointed boards and commissions. So that'll influence zoning decisions, it can influence things at the Landmarks Commission, at City Council, or the City Plan Commission. The buildings were beautiful. They were just covered up by, you know, the bricked in windows, the bars on the, on the windows. We just figured out how to make them their individual space and bring them back to the way they were when my uncle bought them, which was sometime in the 30s. I'm particularly passionate about taking some of these older buildings and seeing how they can be reused and repurposed instead of tearing down. We saw these dilapidated old buildings and we really kind of saw what they could be. I love these buildings. The old wood, the tenants had left old milk cartons, boots, treasures, old catalogs from 1932. It was just like it stopped in time. 
So now I'm giving it back to my tenants and letting them reuse it in their space and reincorporate it. We don't want to create the type of gentrification that we see in so many cities and so many areas where we basically uh, build out the community that was here, displace the community, or only have a one monolithic style or type of buyer. This neighborhood has so much authenticity because of the architecture and the buildings, but also the, what the people fill it with. We take these buildings that are part of the history, and then we're kind of filling them up with young, new ideas. So it's this melding of tradition and history with creative new ideas. I wanted it to be a mix of different types of businesses, not just a traditional strip shopping center where we would have different customers coming. You know, a person that's gonna get a tattoo is not the same person that might buy a wedding dress. It could be. Our group of tenants has been so good because they've been able to take these great bones and just make them amazing. It's a beautiful building now. We've got crude craft coffee in there, which was a startup. We've got a few different office users upstairs, and we're in the process of doing a build out for Game Theory, which will be one of the first board game lounges here in Fort Worth. This neighborhood's very unique to Fort Worth. This is the place where there's a lot of really cool, hardworking people that want to do things as independents. When the first few restaurants established themselves and there were bars and the streets started to feel like there was a lively environment, Park Place had this cute community feel and Magnolia started to have some energy that was specifically focused towards the evenings, the marketing committee at Fort Worth South realized that the only way to really celebrate those successes, those landmarks, was to find some type of event, a parade or a festival that would showcase the work that had been done. Arts Goggle was created as a nod to those people who had, had done early work. They were highly talented and they were looking for some exposure. They were a deeply important part of our community. The main purpose was to show how much this part of town had changed. We realized that so many people still had the image of the near south side as being a pretty rough and tumble place. We needed an opportunity for the outside world. We needed a way for them to see what was happening. And the very first Arts Goggle had 12 venues. So 12 places of business opened up their doors. 11 years later, we've got 350 artists. I think it is arguably one of the largest events as far as artist participation uh, in Fort Worth. 350 artists, over 100 bands that play on one day. You've got 90 different businesses that are opening their doors to live music and visual artists. The events have, have a real energy, a charisma. They create this buzz in the neighborhood where everyone is excited.